the Stafford Voice. Profiles in History. While being held prisoner by the British, he wrote a parody of God Save the King called God Save the Thirteen States. Thomas Hayward Jr. was born on July 28, 1746 in St. Luke's Parish, South Carolina. He was the eldest son of tobacco planter Daniel Hayward, having been stuck with Jr. to distinguish himself from his uncle. When the time came, he was shipped off to study law at Middle Temple at Cambridge University in London, England. Five years later, on May 25, 1770, he was admitted to the bar. Over the next few years, he would spend it touring England before returning back to South Carolina and starting his practice, rising quickly in the political ranks. On April 20, 1773, he married Elizabeth Matthews. From the South Carolina... Carolina General Assembly, Hayward was selected as a delegate to the Continental Congress in 1775. He arrived in Philadelphia with enough time for the debate on independence, voting in favor for and later signing the Declaration of Independence in August 76. In addition, he stuck around long enough to also sign the Articles of Confederation in 1778. Now, upon returning home, he acted as a circuit judge and served in the State House of Representatives. In addition to that, he joined the South Carolina Militia in 1779 and was a captain of artillery. During the successful defense of Port Royal Island, in which General Moultrie defeated the British, Hayward received a gunshot wound that would only leave him with a little scar. The British, however, meant business and laid siege to Charleston and looted Hayward's large estate. When Charleston finally surrendered on May 12, 1780, he and fellow signer Edward Rutledge were rounded up with many others and sent to prison in St. Augustine, Florida. As a prisoner, Thomas was more under house arrest than being locked up in chains. The prisoners, who had to give their promise not to escape, could walk around town and lived in a large house with a garden and orange grove. However, reportedly one of the worst things they had to deal with while there was the, quote, smelly water they had to drink. Roughly a year later, in July 1781, they received news that they were going to be exchanged for British prisoners. Now, according to some resources, at the July 4th banquet being held included a rousing rendition of God Save the King. The prisoner's version, however, had lyrics that were a little more revolutionary appropriate, they say. Lyrics that Hayward wrote entitled God Save the Thirteen States. On the way back to freedom in Philadelphia, Thomas Hayward almost died falling overboard. He clung on the rudder until they were able to pull him back aboard. Awaiting his arrival was his wife, however, their reunion only lasted about a year. On August 16, 1782, she passed away after giving birth a few days earlier, and sadly their baby boy lived only two months. Well, when the British finally left Charleston, Hayward returned home, mostly to work on restoring the family plantation and getting into agriculture, where he was one of the founders of the South Carolina Agricultural Society and in 1785 became its first president. On May 4th, 1786, he married his second wife, Elizabeth Savage. Now, afterward, he served as associate law judge for South Carolina and later served as a delegate to adopt the South Carolina State Constitution in 1790. In 1799, Thomas retired, withdrawing entirely from public life. On April 17, 1809, Thomas Hayward Jr. passed away in St. Luke's Parish, South Carolina, at the very same family estate where he was born. Later, Benjamin Rush said of him, quote, He was a firm Republican of good education and most amicable manners. He possessed an elegant political genius which he sometimes exercised with success upon the various events of the war. And that is this week's Profiles in History.